Can you believe this shit? The Glazers are threatening to stick around. And I think there's some truth to this, and it terrifies me. Joel and Avram Glazer are increasingly confident of securing outside investment that will enable them to remain as Manchester United owners and potentially double the value of the club over the next decade. And who could argue with them? 18 years ago, they put, oh, uh, nothing down. Bought the club with £660 million worth of debt paid. Oh, nothing back. Allowed the club to pay over £1.5 in interest payments and debt refinancing costs. Taking dividends out the entire time. And now it's worth somewhere in the region of between four and £6 billion. And they've still put nothing in. Why wouldn't they think they can get some other mug to come and invest into this club and then walk away when it's worth 10 or 12 billion in another decade's time. Why wouldn't they think that? Every single thing that has happened with this football club from then to now suggests that they're probably right. As long as they can hold on to the keys of this football club, it'll be worth more and more and more. And they don't have to invest. They don't have to be liked. They don't have to do jack shit. They just get to cash their chips out by staying alive long enough that it's going to double in value. That's how little of a fuck they give about this football club. They never bought Manchester United with the intention of making it a success. It was a heist from day one. They might as well have wore a fucking mask and carried a shotgun because it was a bank robbery. It was just done with paperwork and notaries and that was made it legal. But it was fucking robbery from day one. And it's us that have been fucking robbed. This news comes on the back of them being a third round of bidding because no one's come to them with the valuation that they're looking for. So Jim Radcliffe and Sheikh Jassim uh, expected to make new bids. The Zillica fella has pulled out to everyone's shock. But this bid or this news seems to pour cold water on it when the glazers announced they was looking for investment they, they they left it open like this it was anything from a full sale to can we drip the club up a little bit more and can we drip the club up a little bit more has always been an option now part of me sits here trying to be rational and going it's negotiation tactic this is what always happens. Every single negotiation is always a little bit of a, a, a last minute flurry. Oh, I don't need to sell a club then. No, it's not enough. I, I won't sell, I'll keep it. But the possibility of keeping them around has made us all flap. The possibility of them keeping hold of the club has shit everyone up because it is the worst possible outcome for Manchester United. And like I said, there's two perspectives to look on this. Some people, and I, I kind of one of them, think it's posturing from the Glazers, trying to extract more money from the potential bidders because that's the game they're in. They're in, ring this fucking thing out for every single cent that they can. That's their game. But there's a, a flurry of reports pertaining to US investment firms that are coming up which seem to provide financial news that actually there's some truth to this potential investment side. The value of United fell following a report um, that they're set to remain owners. Because the market's like, one, we know that they're not good and obviously the, the value of the club goes down if there's not going to be an impending sale. The stock price fell 13% after ESPN claimed that the owners and co-chairman Joel and Avram are confident that they're going to secure investment that enables them to keep hold of the club. Shares dropped to $18.91 on Monday uh, in New York, which is the lowest it's been since November. Protests are starting to stir up. Uh, for those who are not aware of, the 1958 are trying to organise a protest for the 30th. I imagine if there's any sort of potential that this is real, that protest will be one of the biggest, most attended and angriest protests that we've seen from Manchester United fans. If you think getting the Liverpool game cancelled was a big deal, you ain't seen anything yet. 
You try and keep hold of this club and watch what fucking chaos unfolds. You're not wanted. You was never wanted in the first place. And when you give us all the hope of fucking off, if you take that back away from us, you're going to fucking regret it. That Liverpool game getting cancelled will look like toddlers going off at a nursery. It's going to get messy. And I don't mean Leo. They need to fuck off. For everyone's sake. Right, let's see what you lot are saying in the comments. Red Lad says, New Delhi Group were mentioned this was likely to happen. Adam says, I hope it's posturing tactics, but I'm all down for protests. Um, the 30th is my wedding anniversary. Janine doesn't know it yet, but we're going to be spending our wedding anniversary fucking shouting and telling people to fuck off. Uh, Jibak says, protests need to reach the stateside. These leeches uh, are not feeling the heat. Uh, they need to make. We need to make it real for them. Right now, they are simply sitting comfy. Look, I'll fucking go. I will go and I will fucking do a, I will go and let them know my feelings. I think it's the legal thing I can say here. Um, Sudip says, United end up being Leeds and Forest if the Glazers stay. Yep. Do I think a protest will change anything? Here's the thing with a protest, right? We've been protesting since... Shit. The first ones might have been in... They might have been 2004, but they were certainly in early 2005. Um, if you've not seen the 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 pictures, I've got pictures of me in Afghanistan in 2006 with the Love United 8 Glazer sticker. I was on all the flash mobbings. I was on all the protest marches. I was on all the not for sales. There was a big one before AC Milan that year, I seem to remember. Um, I was on all of those marches and we protested and they bought the fucking club. So on one hand, you can say, well, that protest did absolutely jack shit. And we protested large since. We had the 2010 ones. We had David Beckham wearing a green and gold. And, and what has technically changed? Not a lot. But I think something changed with the Liverpool one. The European Super League and, and that particular set of protests, I think since then the Glazers have probably been looking for an exit strategy. I don't think all of this sale talk just came about like a few weeks back. I just don't think. Um, out of one to yes, is there a knife within reach of my desk? <laughs> Why? What a weird question. Um, I don't think these protests came about like... The bat's not, though. They've taken my bat away. Bastards. I'm almost defenseless in here. Um... I don't think these sale talks came about within the last month or two or, or when we first started to hear about them. I'm pretty sure you're looking at almost a year now. Um, I think those protests actually made them decide to sell the club. I think the, the collapse of the European Super League and the protests, and I think the protests certainly had to, something to do with the collapse of the European Super League. So I think those protests definitely did do something. And I strongly believe protesting again, bigger, louder, angrier, and maybe more Florida-based would certainly have an impact. If Manchester United have another game suspended, if Manchester United um, are late, maybe get into a game because the roads are blocked off around Old Trafford because we've prevented the, the coaches getting to the game in the first place. If there's anything like that happens... It would make worldwide news again. The Glazers were present when we were winning the Carabao Cup, listening to the Glazer out chants. They can't be deluded into thinking that we like them. With the protests going on, like you might have, they might have had a lot of yes men that are around them that have, have said, oh, do you know, the them protests that. Liverpool game they wasn't about you they didn't like the European Super League idea but this isn't about you they might have had someone that spun that yarn to them but there's no way if this protest um, happens because they're thinking about sticking around there's no way they can be deluded into thinking that this isn't 100% about them the European Super League is not on the table at the moment this is a fucking glazers out there's no two ways around this I mean 
there was no two ways around it for me for the last one, but you know, by the sounds of it, they they don't listen to news that isn't positive. So it's one of those, isn't it? Uh, Cantree says it's almost like you stay in someone's house knowing they don't like you. How do you possibly feel comfortable enough to stay knowing the fan base absolutely hates you? I think there's a little bit. Um, I think there's a little bit of something in that they don't listen to the news about them. Hendrick says, how do we who don't live in Manchester help with the protest? I don't know. I'm not 100% certain trending on Twitter does too much because we've trended on Twitter countless times. I don't think they're on Twitter going, oh, fucking hell, we're trending. Um, Stuart says, Operation Steve visits Tampa. Listen, I look fucking sensational in a Hawaiian shirt. And I would absolutely go and be very, very polite with them. Believe you me. Um, KFA Posse says 19% is not enough MUCA for them. I don't know what that means. Uh, online sponsor commenting. Yeah, there's probably a little bit of putting pressure on the online sponsors. See, I used to think that, oh, we did flash mobbing, right? We did the Labbrook store and we did the Nike store in Manchester City Centre. Um and let's just say we flash mobbed them. You could say, well, did they do anything? Well, neither of those lot ever. There was a Vodafone shop got done as well, and I wasn't a part of that one. But none of those people renewed sponsorships. Now, I don't think any of them ever cited the protests and the flash mobbing and that sort of stuff, but you got to think it it, play, it does um, play a part. Um, for sure it plays a part. Uh, Joe says, those outside Manchester turn up at the London offices of these businesses. Yeah, or the local business. Um, Robit says, the last time a Manchester club won the treble, they had a Norwegian striker. Not today, mate. We're not talking about that today. Ruben says, either way, the Glazers get what they want. They either get a billion per rat or in 10 years' time when the club's worth 10 billion. And that's if we're lucky. Uh, Honey Badger said, Steve, the article yesterday said one reason they were considering staying is a reconfiguring of the club game, a.k.a. Super League. Yeah, I, I get the impression that the Super League thing didn't go away. It just went for a rebrand. And that worries me a lot. It worries me a lot. Because the integrity of the game is propped up on the back of it, it being a, an entire meritocracy. Um, congratulations to Hashtag United for winning their league uh, this past weekend. They're also on course potentially for 100 points. I think most of us watched uh, the Wrexham game the week before and seeing just how close Wrexham and Notts County are going for it. Um, this is what makes English football is the depth of the pyramid. And my fucking little pub team at level 13 are on that pyramid. And it's the depth of that. The amount of clubs at every single level all the way up to the Premier League is what makes the Premier League great. You take that away, the whole pack of cards falls from underneath it. You can't have that without that below it. That's what props it up. Where do you think the likes of Marcus Rashford learn to play football. It's not at Manchester United. That's where their talent is nurtured. Without grassroots football in this country, without the non-league teams that provide those grassroots facilities and opportunities, there is no fucking football. There is no Marcus Rashford. There is no Harry Kane. There is no Jude Bellingham. Without the entire pyramid underneath propping up, you can't have the top tier. It's different in America. Because their grassroots is the school system and the college system, and there's always going to be a, a place to provide for the professional game. In England, it's the fucking grassroots. You can't disconnect one from the other. It doesn't work like that. Uh, Damien says they cannot buy out siblings and sort the club out. They will go. I hope so. Um, Phil with a super chat says, uh, Met United management protest hurt sponsors taken very or met man united management uh protest hurt sponsors taken very serious there you go that's what you need to do sponsors mark says not surprised the glazers want to stay on the back of 10 high great work yeah musical alley music alley 
says, uh, how don't they understand that if they keep the club and keep running the club the way they are now, racking up debt in a decade, it'll likely be worth less than we are now. Because you just have to look at what's happened in the last decade and the last 18 years. The club price has done this. It's not done that. Like, and it's like they've neglected it. for Now, it might be at the tipping point where it requires a substantial investment to maintain any sort of competitive edge at all. And that doesn't even necessarily include winning stuff. That just means trying to keep up with the pack. It might be the point where the ground, the, the, the training ground, the stadium, like all of that sort of stuff might need such investment that it can't be done. And we might have already reached that zenith. But, like I said, if you look at the trend, 18 years they've neglected us, and look how much it's gotten worth. <sighs> Max Sense says, uh, what would be the best way to make the protest relevant and impact the Glazers, in my opinion? Organising something in Florida, hurting sponsors. Um, I don't know what I can say legally, is the honest truth, because I think anything that I would be thinking would be harassing them. But I, I think it's probably got to... I, I'm probably not even going to be able to say this, so I'm not... I'll just <laughs> plead the fifth. Um, I would say, I don't know. Get creative. Brian says, really hope it's just a tactic to raise the price. Only fear is it pisses off the potential buyers and they all pull out. This is it. You're playing a poker game. When you're trying to get people to raise the stakes, they get to walk away from the table as well, not just you. So... If they fold and they fold, that's that. Sal says they see NFL teams selling for seven billion who are awful, so they think they'll get a ton for United. Yeah, we sort of touched on this uh, a while back. NFL teams are protected from losses. None of them really run at a loss. They all make profit. Some of them are far greater profit than others, but they kind of all run at a profit. Their facilities are usually provided by the metropolitan city that they're based within. What are the major outgoings of an NFL team? It's just wages. They don't really have transfer fees of any sort to deal with. They have they have a raft of sponsorships in the NFL that make Manchester United's noodle sponsorships look just car boot, honestly. Like they, the NFL is so commercial. American sports on the whole, because of all the advert sort of breaks and things like that, they're so commercialised and so profitable in terms of what they bring to sponsors. It's almost alien to compare even Premier League football with it in the grand scheme of things for the numbers Premier League football does. Um, Ed says, Steve, I'd redacted to redacted with a redacted and leave no trace. I like that. Uh, Roy Keane, hello, Phil. Uh, says, Old Trafford, not a part of the Euro bid, says all. Um, Anon says, the only people that can hurt them is sponsors or the FA. Sit on the pitch in all league games. Yeah. Um, Music Alley says I agree uh, but like you said we've been competitive till this point thanks to the good work done before the Glazers now now we're getting to the point where we need investment and if we don't uh, we fall behind yep Chris says just feels like they're trying to squeeze the last penny they can from it surely if an independent regulator and the route uh, the Premier going down means the Super League is finished so surely they sell I think that was a large part in I was I, I was wording it incorrectly, I think, before, but that's, I think, in a large part of why I anticipate there being a sale um, and what what their sort of interest in a sale was generated by. I think that they've probably, for the last few years, been working on the Super League on the sly, uh, and when that no longer looked like a possibility, they put the club up for sale. Um, I think that's the one. Listen, do me a favour. There's only about... 50 or so percent of you that are subscribed so loads of you lot are just being proper sneaky little lurkers so hit that subscribe button and if you, you think you're subscribed but you might not be just have a quick little check hit the subscribe button uh, and then we'll get back to chatting okay um al max says we can't call for riots but no we can't call for riots yeah uh, you do have to be genuinely careful like you you know we're all for peaceful protest and for getting your voice heard but you certainly can't legally call for riots doesn't work like that um josh says jamie jackson this morning said shake jassim is confident and will bid earlier than the 28th deadline okay um 
Umar Khan says, Steve, if games start getting called off, they'll understand. Uh, I can't see any other protest without violence. I can't see any other without violence protest. I think because you've teased us, like for 18 years, they, we got nothing out of them. Absolutely nothing. For 18 years, jack shit. And then the second we get the inkling that they might fuck off, and not only that they might fuck off, you've got a potential lifelong fan in Jim Radcliffe or not all sunshine and rainbows. You've got potential uh, Qatari investment, which brings its own problems, but you've got those two things on the horizon. Both individuals seem to be, at least through the PR that they're putting out, are talking about connecting the club back to the fans and going for winning things, right? So as a fan, you go, Jesus, yes, all about both of those things. You've heard fuck all out the Glazers. Their actions tell you they don't really give a toss about winning. Keep us in the Champions League. Keep the money coming in. And who gives a fuck what else happens? They don't care. They don't care. And then they pull the rug out from underneath you like, nah, fuck it. We actually think it'd be worth more if we just kept it for another 10, di 10 years of you lot suffering. Being fucking rinsed by these lot. Uh, KFA Posse says, just pony up six billion in oil moolah. They will be gone in two minutes. Uh, Brian says, Glazers could be hoping Sheikh Jassim just hands them a blank check. Uh, he's the only one that can give them the amount they want. It might be. It might be. I mean, there's all sorts of other things in the mixer here, like who's going to cover the debt? I don't know what the script would be, but imagine there's tax on it. I mean, it's on the New York Stock Exchange, isn't it? So is it listed as an American company? Is there VAT to pay on it? I have no idea how this shit works. Like, I've never bought a football club worth six billion before, so I don't know. Is there VAT to pay on top? Imagine that. Over a billion goes to the government. Fuck me. Um, Fizz says, Glazer's trying to mess with the tiger. You're going to get the claws. Hector says, rain, fire, and riots are the only way to get the Glazers out. Um, I think we have to be careful saying riot. I think you have to say peaceful protest. Ant says, surely it's got to be cheaper for someone to... <laughs> yeah, probably is. Uh, sales has capital gains tax. I, I, I don't know the way the finances work and, and what all the rest of that sort of shit is. Uh, Umar says, I feel I... <laughs> Some stuff about redacted. <laughs> uh, Dan says, can we just go medieval style? I'm probably going to assume no. Um, he says, can we just go medieval style, break into the Mayfair office like now? Nah, we, we ain't leaving. We run this now. Do you know what? No. Legally, no. Uh, look, if let's just say one random ex-veteran Drawsden resident decided to go and park himself in the Mayfair office, I would be um, ejected and arrested inside about four minutes if I even managed to get inside. If you did it with, I don't know, a couple of hundred of you, I'd be very surprised if you was arrested. But organising a couple of hundred people willing to be arrested is another thing, isn't it? Uh, Juraj says, uh, let's let someone pay big billboards around Florida with sentences glazes out from United fans. You're not welcome in Manchester anymore. Uh, and pay ads in Florida news with similar sentences. We looked into that, actually. There are, um, we know where they live. Um, thanks to some Florida residents that got in touch with the channel uh, around this time last year. We know where they live. Uh, and they're actually on Google Maps outside their own house, which is hilarious um so it's very easy to identify billboards that would top and i mean it's america right there's a fucking billboard every 30 meters although not quite in the the keys part where they live because i don't know if you realize this they've rinsed the club that much they've got nice gaffs quite big gaffs that are on the water but there are billboards all over the gaff you could easily get billboards top and tail in their street um apparently i've just commented allegedly it's not allegedly we know where they live it's not illegal to know where someone lives. Um, so, you know, you could probably get banners, uh, billboards done. I'll go. I've always wanted to go to Florida. I've got some friends in Florida, Coconut Creek area. Um, 
American top team. Do I know anyone with a spare Apache? No. <laughs> um, Matthew says, might turn illegal if I know where they live. Um, well, that's on you, mate. Alex says, see, this is what why they're putting their lives at risk. We have genuine hate, some threats of actual harm to them. There have been some threats of actual harm to them. Um, you're right, there has been. Um, Chris says, I'll throw a few quid to fly a plane with a banner around their house. If they're on the water, can you get a boat up to the back of their gaff with a megaphone? Fuck off. Like that. Hey, Baldy, fuck off. Andy says, a peaceful protest uh, at the as-yet-to-be-determined Chelsea home game where United need a point to gain Champions League progress, millions at stake. Damn. Uh, 88 says only fools thought this sale was going to go smoothly. <laughs> Ivo says the only protest they care about don't spend money with a club, scare away the sponsors. Um, get them in headlocks like Everton fans. Is that what happened? What happened? Ryan says ideally do a full AC Milan and empty the stadium until they're gone. See, unfortunately. That's going to be extremely difficult to organise. And I could see that ended up going violent outside as some fans, there, there are some fans who genuinely don't care. And it's sad that they just go, no, I'm here to, to come watch the game. Or, you know, if if you've, tra if, let's say you, you, you've travelled for that and it's the one game a season that you get to, are you going to stand outside and be part of the solidarity? I would hope so. And I would hope you'd feel very connected to the fan base for doing that. But I also can see some people who probably aren't even aware of what's going on with the Glazers and just go, I'm fucking going in. Bought a ticket, in we go. Sadly. Um, Fizz says, damn thick-skinned Glazers. Has there ever been a more thick-skinned set of people in the world, ever? I mean, like, literally ever. Has there ever been a more thick-skinned set of individuals it can't be good for your health to have that many people disliking you, can it? Uh, Max N says, do I think a partial sale would be better for United in the short term as it would allow us to prepare for the summer? What what short term is there? There is no short term. If you've got the Glazers, it doesn't matter. They, they don't give a shit. The only short term they do is just enough to keep the Champions League tap on. That's all they're asked about. They just need to fuck off. That's it. Top and bottom, fuck off, sling it anyway i'm done if you want me i'll be on expedia or TripAdvisor or somewhere else looking at how much flights are to florida see you in the next one. Oh, before i go fucking subscribe or i'll come to your house on a megaphone see you in a bit Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.